Imagine waking up, not knowing reality from fantasy, finding yourself discombobulated, sorting out yesterday from today, reliving memories as you awaken, being told for three decades you're wrong, confused, and mistaken. Well, I don't have to imagine it, because I've lived it. Yes, 30 years ago, on this very day, my life was muddled. Pop goes the weasel, serenaded this cul-de-sac. Kids from all over flooded the street as the white box truck swerved the roundabout, anticipation mounted. Parents instead sighed with disdain. Grown-ups lack the bliss of ignorance. Wisdom and knowledge gives birth to reality. Fantasy fades as the age heightens. Nightmare begins to replace dreams as precedent replaces intent. Happiness is forsaken for security. Scrutiny kills the whimsical. Juvenile minds see blissful pictures, colorful arrangements, and nice men wearing white. Children hear laughter, bells, whistles, music, and polite gestures. Adults perceive marketing schemes, deceptive lures, and questionable men. Adults hear chaos, obstruction of peace, annoyances, noise, and hustlers draped in white. Though life is not within the spectrum of simplicity, I believe life to be many vibrant colors of understanding. When that truck opened the shutter, I saw orange. Accompanying the orange was brown. Therefore, I perceived a wholesome kind of happiness. A dark-skinned man with dreads peeked out. His vibrant smile instilled confidence. He yelled, Who wants ice cream? Children all belted back, Me, 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 I want ice cream. Parents smiled at his demeanor and appearance. His uniform was crisp, blemish-free, and hair bound in a net. One by one, children approached the truck. A vast array of ice cream was selected. Some said strawberry shortcake, orange cream sickle, patriot bomb pop, chocolate fudge, and other popular character shapes. Parents had smiles too, as even they ordered ice cream. The hypocrisy was real. Though alas, one woman approached the truck alone. I overheard her say, you know, you're the second truck today. Though you are so much more professional than the man from earlier. Your appearance is dapper, and the ice seems just a little bit colder. Her and the man shared a gigantic laugh, though I didn't understand what was so funny. Before it was my turn, the man announced, I'm so sorry, I'm all out. Tomorrow I'll have twice as much. Myself and five others moaned and groaned. Parents and the ice cream man assured us it would be okay. Hours passed as the day grew hotter. Though we were having so much fun playing tips, we didn't even notice. It seemed as if the last game went on forever. We leapt into the air, catching the ball on our fingertips, simultaneously pushing the ball into another player's direction. Dorian caught the ball while still on the ground. <laughs> we all laughed, telling him he was eliminated. Suddenly, we heard a deep horn, then something ominous, like a xylophone. Following this was a piano in harmony. Street lights came on as the darkness swept the streets. Dorian and Tyrell both said, Well, 
Mama said be home when the street lights come on. I mocked Tyrell, questioning. Do you always have to do what your mother says? Tyrell looked at me with wide eyes. Yes, and she said anybody try to stop me, she'll whoop their narrow behind as well. Then off darted Tyrell. Dorian ran to his home. That left Daniel, Thomas, and myself out in the dark. The music jarred us a bit as it grew louder, though we couldn't see where it was coming from. Vibrating of a vicious motor rumbled and rattled. Daniel started to quiver. Soon Thomas said, Where is that coming from? Petrified and too afraid to move, I remained quiet. Lights flashed on from up high. Bright light perpetually shined down on us. Loud screeching overcame us as the lights turned away. From above, the street light came on, unveiling a truck before our eyes. The truck was adorned with chains, black dirt streaks, and smudges all around. From under the truck seeped a cool mist. As the mist crept past our ankles, I felt a chill. We could see our breath before our faces. How could it be so hot, yet get so cold? Shutters sprang upward, clanging until a bang sounded. With this moment, I saw the color black. Black symbolized mystery. Loud footsteps pounded the metallic floor of the truck. A breathy exhale sounded. As a gust of cold air shot past us, next, a deep breath sounded. <sighs> then a voice spoke. Who wants ice cream? We didn't answer. Then on came a red light inside the truck. Within the light, was a pale and robust man with gray hair. He was riddled with scars, corroded flesh, exposed sores and stitches. He leaned his round face forward, then uttered, I asked nicely, who wants ice cream? Next time, be so nice. Daniel hopped backward, screaming, and took off running. The ice cream man laughed as the truck rocked and the sound of the door opening blared. Something we couldn't see chuckled, honking a horn as it ran into the darkness. All we could hear was the pitter patter of quick steps. Daniel screamed for his mother and father, then steps stopped, and so did the screaming. Next was a soft thud and a dragon noise. While the dragon sounded, the ice cream man laughed. Then mockingly he said, <laughs> well, I guess he was right anyway. He screamed. And soon you'll both scream for ice cream. Tears welled up in our eyes as we wanted to whimper. Looking down at his expression, it suddenly changed. Then he stated, I'm sure he made it home. It may be too late for ice cream. A warm sensation went down my right thigh to my ankle. I realized in that moment, I was so scared that I had no choice but to wet myself. What was there to be ashamed of? 
Thomas braced my arm for security. As he cried, soon the truck door opened. A labored grunt could be heard. Then a loud thud as the truck dropped downward and raised. Soon after, the door slammed. The ice cream man bellowed. Don't cry. Let me see what I got in my ice box. He turned his back towards us and stepped away. The truck swayed and bounced. Laughter ensued as he called out Thomas. I've got Tutti Fruity, Bubblegum Eyeballs, and Rocky Spinal Road. Just tell me what you like. Thomas replied crying, How do you know my name? All motions stopped abruptly. He turned back towards us. Walking forward, he said, We've played this game before. I couldn't believe it as I muttered. What game? He smirked. Then he said, Denial. Do you remember how to play? We both shouted, No! Then he stated, I haunt you to the day you die. I'm every nightmare you'll ever have. People will tell you I'm not real. Then they'll medicate or institutionalize you. If too severe, if untreated, I'll make all your dreams fall short. I'll fill your life with uncertainty and woe. I may not get you, though I'll come for your children. When you think I can't get any worse, I'll come for your children's offspring. I'll hack down and freeze the whole damn family tree. In this moment, I saw red. Red light engulfed him, till his features was hard to distinguish. The shutter screeched as it closed. Carving noises echoed from the hull of the truck. Then the truck started up as the motor turned on. Screeching off, the truck sped off into the darkness beyond the street lights. Out came our parents, asking us to come in. Daniel's parents asked, Where is Nino? We tried to explain. Our parents got frustrated and told us, Stop playing! Tell us where Daniel is! No answer was ever good enough. Three days later, there was an Amber Alert. Three states wide. Though Daniel was never found. Years later, many more happened. I choose to never have children. Thomas believed our parents. For the other instances, had nothing to do with the ice cream truck. Thomas became a drunk and married. The only person that could stomach him, despite his rampant gambling. He was a good man, and an even better father, until one day, he came into my hospital dorm, crying outside the glass door. He said of his five children, his youngest son has gone missing. Having tried to let go of the past, I dare not say it. He went on to tell me what he claims his eldest boy is experiencing. Many pieces of the story was missing, though what stood out was the music. He said his eldest heard what we heard. I reminded Thomas of that night. In his drunken stupor, he yelled, Shut your dirty mouth! It wasn't true then, and it isn't true now. You gotta let this go and get better. Almost 30 years in this shithole. Is this what you want? 
He collapsed against the glass door crying. I touched the glass where his head lays while throwing back pills with the other hand. I reached for my glass to swallow down the pills. I stayed. I guess we're still playing the game, huh, Thomas? <laughs>